Thanks for joining us today at City Life. We believe today's message will empower you and point you towards Jesus. But remember that church is so much more than a message you listen to. It's a living, breathing community that we invite you to be a part of. We hope to see you on a Sunday morning at City Life, in person or online. excited to continue our series on the journey, and I'm going to start with an important question. How many of you have seen the new Mission Impossible movie? That's not enough. Oh, man. Okay. So, <laughs> it's fine. You don't have to, but uh, I, I went and saw it, and I, I'm just always amazed at that man, that 61-year-old man, Tom Cruise, who is still doing his own stunts, some of the craziest things in the world riding motorbikes off the side of cliffs, halo jumping out of planes at 25,000 feet, running down the side of the tallest building in the world, hanging onto the side of a cargo plane and actually taking off, uh, flying helicopters and jets, all of these crazy things. Now, he doesn't just get up and be like, this is what we're going to do because I'm Tom Cruise. I got this. No, no, no. When you look at, when you watch some of the behind the scenes stuff, like this is a guy who trains. Like this, his level of dedication is like, amazing. Uh, he gets taught by others, like, how to hold his breath for six minutes so he could film underwater scenes. He can hold his breath for six minutes. He has done hundreds of skydives and bike jumps and everything to practice for these stunts. He, uh, to, to learn how to pilot a helicopter, he did 16-hour days for a full month so he could become, like, an expert helicopter pilot. And, uh, in a world of CGI and green screens, let's be honest, nothing really amazes us anymore, right? It's like, ooh, there's a dinosaur on the screen. Like, whatever, oh, that guy jumped? Now nah, that wasn't real. Like, you know, it doesn't matter, but uh, you can put up the picture. Man, when you know, when you see Tom Cruise, like, dogfighting in a jet or scaling the outside of the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world in Dubai, and you know that he actually did that, there's just, like, a level of, like, awe that actually sets in, you're like, I can't believe, like, that is not faked, that is the real thing, that is so amazing, you know, and I really admire that. So my question is, like, who do you admire? Who are the people that you admire? Is it Connor McDavid, Beyonce, Tom Cruise, Elon Musk, I don't know, we could throw out any name. All these people are gifted, but at some point they took responsibility for their gift, and they worked to grow it. And we are no different. We've been given the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And it is our responsibility to develop the gift we've been given. To do that, we need spiritual training. 1 Timothy 4, 7 says, so Paul is talking to his protege, uh, his disciple, the one he is leading, uh, Timothy. And it says, he just simply says, train yourself in godliness. So godliness isn't, it's like, yeah, I became a Christian, boom, I got everything I need. Well, you do, but you're supposed to train yourself in that, in the gift you've been given to learn how to function in it, to flow in it. So there is training involved. Everybody say training. All right, now, if Tom Cruise can learn how to do all these amazing things and train and whatever, just to, uh, you know, help us have a great time at the movie theater, that's fine. That's good. But how much more should you want to grow in your ability or understanding of Jesus to truly deepen your personal relationship and help others experience the same thing? We should want to go that extra mile to really grasp what we're a part of, what we've been given, and what we're called to do. So today, your mission, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> is to be a disciple and to disciple others. So let's talk about that. What is a disciple? So a disciple, there's, uh, I got two definitions here. Someone who, is, uh, someone who has devoted themselves to a teacher to learn from and become more like them, adapting and changing their lifestyle, beliefs, and understanding. Okay? We're just going to get all on the same page here. When, when I talk about the word disciple, what does that mean? Or another way of saying it, uh, intentionally engaging in relationships, practices, and activities that lead me into deeper obedience to Jesus and helping others to do the same. So discipling is a huge part of our journey with Jesus. Huge. 
And today, I think this really applies to everyone. You might be here, and if you're not a follower of Jesus, hey, I'm glad you're here. And it might be worth saying, you know, with whoever you came with, let's go out for coffee after. I just got questions. I don't know what I believe yet, but I got questions. That's still a discipling aspect of just learning and developing. Maybe you're new to following Jesus. You need to make a plan to go through the journey, which I'll talk about at the end, and all this summer you're going to hear about. But finding ways to grow, maybe do that with someone you're connected with here in church uh, to, to learn. And maybe if you're a longtime follower of Jesus, please do not plateau or coast. I got this. I learned everything I need to know. I've been doing this for, you know, 20 years or whatever. What more can God teach me? Like, come on, the more mature we get in Christ, the more we know that it is just a big ocean and it is amazing. So read books, have conversations around the fire pit this summer, do whatever you need to just keep growing and learning. We need to grow and we need to help others grow. How do I know this? Is this just my advice? No. This was one of the very last things Jesus said to us while he was here in person. Okay? Look at this verse. Matthew 28, 19 uh, tells us, go out, uh, it says, go out and make disciples in all the nations. Ceremonially wash them through baptism in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then disciple them. Look at this. Form them in the practices and postures. Everyone say practices and postures. I, I know you're with me. Form them in the practices and postures that I've taught you. And show them how to follow the commands I have laid down for you. And I'll be with you day after day to the end of the age. The end, the last thing he says in that book. If you, uh, if it were your last words and you knew your last words were about to be shared or this was the last time you're you're on your deathbed or uh, you know you're never going to see these people again, what would you say what would you say, like, those are probably, like, if you're thinking about it, it's like, what's, what do I want to go out on? What's, what do I want to say? Jesus knew what he was saying here. So this has weight. He tells us, go make disciples. This is not, this is called the great commission, is what they refer to. It's not the great suggestion. He's not like, hey, if you, I'm leaving. Uh, if you guys need something to do, uh, what about that? Maybe try that. No, no, no. He's like, guys, listen up. I'm about to leave. If you remember anything out of all I've shown you and taught you, this is what I want you to do. I think we need to take that pretty seriously. Jesus is summing up everything. And he's saying, hey, I want you to form others. Help them become like me. Using what I've taught you, the practices and postures or habits and mindsets, right? Because a posture, it's like a way of thinking. It's a mindset. The practices, the habits we have, use that to form and become like me. So what kind of things did he tell us? How about love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Take up your cross daily. Deny yourself. Don't believe false teachings. Turn the other cheek. Let your light shine before people. Get rid of anything that causes you to sin. Repent. Rejoice. Love one another. Be merciful. Go the extra mile. Guard what is sacred. Humble yourself. Don't worry about tomorrow. Seek first the kingdom of God. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Treat children with respect. Love your enemies. Forgive your offenders. Be a servant. Honor those in authority. Take care of the poor. Go and sin no more. Abide in me. That's a lot of things. That's not even all of them. But he just says, hey, I've already given you everything you need. Use that to form yourself as a disciple. But then this is what you use to help form others. Here's my commands. Jesus didn't just make suggestions. Like he said, like there were very clear things. He's like, if you're going to follow me, you got to do this. Okay, I guess if I'm really following you, I should probably do it. Man, what a treasure trove of practices and postures or habits and mindsets. We need to be formed by them and help others be formed by them too. So, why does discipleship matter? Man, like, I believe in discipleship. I have seen it played out in my life. I have been able to disciple friends and peers, my kids, um, you know, and again, discipling, just learning, growing, and then investing that into others, helping people discover what it means to truly follow Jesus on this journey. I was discipled. That's how I ended up here, uh, where I am, who I am. It came, you know, like I was raised in the church, but I didn't really necessarily like grasp it. I wouldn't say I had like a relationship with Jesus. I would say I believe in him. But when I was 18 and I got right with, like God just, it's a whole story, but just like, just jabbed me and was like, time to wake up. I clearly, to me, it's like, get out of autopilot 
and be intentional. I just, that's still the word I say to use it. He just brought me out of autopilot. And it's like, be intentional, follow Jesus. And I was like, okay, what do I need to do for that? I wasn't thriving where I was. I was like, hey, I'm going to come to this, this church that my sister's already going to, this little place called Word of Life Center, which is now called City Life. And so I've been coming here since I was 18. And, you know, you get in, and right away, Dennis Porter takes me and starts meeting with me and investing in me. I, I, don't, I, don't, I think if I just showed up and sat in the back row, I don't think I would be... Uh, you can sit in the back row. It's okay. You guys, Gina, you're, you're fine, Gina. You can sit in the back row. I mean, spiritually sit in the back row. Well, you know, I'm just, no. Someone came and brought, brought me to life, helped me, and disciple me. And that is so important. And took me on a journey, a journey that looks like this. And this is a key verse for a series. Colossians 2, 6, and 7 says, Now that you have welcomed the anointed one, Jesus the Lord, into your lives, okay, I'd done that. Okay, I welcome you in. Yes, Jesus, I want you to be Lord. That's not, that's not the end of the sentence. Continue to journey with him and allow him to shape your lives. Okay. So I've welcomed you in, Jesus. That's not the end? No, it's not the end. Continue to journey with him. Allow him to shape your lives. Let your roots go down deeply in him and let him build you up on a firm foundation. Be strong in the faith. Be strong in the faith just as you were taught, and always spill over with thankfulness. Man, that's so good. Now, leave this up for a minute, because look at the implications of this verse. Look at the implications of this verse. <laughs> Continue to journey with him. So it is possible to stop following Jesus. If you can continue to journey with him, you can also choose not to continue to journey with him. So you can say yes to Jesus and then fall out of that. Okay? Uh, allow him to shape your lives. So, what does that tell us? Your life is shapeable, and you get to choose what shapes it. You need to allow Jesus to do his work because he won't force it on you. Let your roots go deep, down deep in him. It is possible to be a shallow Christian, easily plucked like a weed. That's the implications. Uh, let him build you up on a firm foundation. Okay, so it is possible to have a weak Christian foundation then if we don't let him build and develop us. Be strong in the faith just as you were taught. That means it's possible to be weak in the faith if you are not teachable and malleable. Now, I don't want to give up. I don't want to be shallow and weak as a Christian. But that, that's what can happen if I don't become a true disciple and see the value of helping others become a true disciple. So we've been invited into the journey, becoming disciples and discipling others. How do we do that? How do we, how do we journey with him? How do we allow Jesus to shape our lives? How do our roots grow down deep? How do we build strong foundations? How do we become strong in the faith? Well, if we look again at that great commission, and we apply it to ourselves, apply it to yourself as a disciple, okay, I need to know this, but also as someone called to disciples. Jesus, like, commands us. This is his great commandment, his great commission, you got to do this for others too. If we can take some ownership as I get into some of the hows we do this, again, like I don't want to leave the train station if you're not on the train, so I hope you're with me. I hope you're like, okay, I see that I need this and I need to do this for others. I don't know what that looks like yet. Okay, well, let's do this together right now. We're gonna, I'm going to give you some spiritual practices or postures that you can do to grow as a disciple and to help others grow as a disciple, okay? So, first spiritual practice you're already doing it. You're in church. You're doing it. You, you guys, you can already check it off your list. You're like, oh, I'm already doing one? You're already doing it. Hebrews 10, 24, 25. Let us consider how to inspire each other great, to greater love and to righteous deeds, not forgetting to gather as a community, as some have forgotten, but encouraging each other, especially as the day of his return approaches. Man, being in church matters. I'm glad you're watching online. Still would love to have you in person. Maybe you will be. Maybe you're on holidays and you're still tuning in. So you still see the value. That's amazing. Uh, we need to gather together. The church is God's plan A. And why wouldn't you want to be a part of his plan A? Well, because, JD, the people here aren't perfect. Yeah, but then why are you here? Why am I here? Why are any of us here? That can't be the thing. It's like, mm, no, like this person said this, or I don't like the way it's, it's no, no, no. We are a group of recovering sinners following Jesus together, you, I guarantee you, if you haven't been here very long, you will be offended at some point. 
probably just have to have a conversation with me or maybe Chandler or some of you, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Because we're all coming at things from a different place and we're all coming towards the source, but we're coming from all these different avenues. There's no way that's always going to line up right. So if we can kind of get over that and just realize you're entering into a family, you're commanded to love. If you were a disciple, you, were, you follow his commandments. Listen to this, John 15, 12. Jesus says, this is my commandment, not a suggestion, that you love one another, and he's talking specifically about believers, that you love one another just as I have loved you. So not how you want to love them. Love one another. It's a commandment, and you're supposed to do it the way he does. So if Jesus allows you in the building, you better be okay with anybody else gathering together and being part of the family. Unity, guys, we need this. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Stick around, and you'll see. There's gonna, you're going to have opportunities to either be offended or whatever, but I had to learn early on, if Jesus calls his church his bride, I am not going to smack talk his wife. I love the church. I love the church. People within the church, I'm learning how to love them. You know, we're all like that. But the church, what it represents and what we're, we're, we're coming into a part of, I love it. And I'm going to build God's church. I'm going to speak highly of it. I'm going to serve in it. I want to build it up. And I think that is so important. Man, every, I feel like almost every good thing in my life came out of planting myself in church. My best friends, my wife, my family. Uh, skills I didn't know I have that were pulled out of me that applied not just here but to uh, my work abroad. Everything. I feel like everything came from it. So, to sum up that one, if you're becoming a disciple, okay, if you're like on the journey... You've got to be planted in a local church and get involved and serve. It makes such a difference. And if you're discipling someone else, I'm going to give you tips too. If you're like, hey, I'll, I'm willing to meet with someone and help them, what do I say? Uh, show them the beauty of God's church. Help them get past any offense and invite them to join a team. Maybe your team, whatever team you're on, because hopefully you're on a team. That would be awesome. But that's some great things to do. All right, next, practice and posture. Learn from others. Learn from others. Paul knew the importance of leading by example so that others could follow. I would have a hard time saying this, but clearly he knew the value. And, and so he says this, 1 Corinthians 11, become imitators of me. Okay, he's telling this to the church. This would be like him standing up here saying, hey, do what I do. Become imitators of me just as I also am of Christ. So I'm trying to be a good reflection of Jesus. Just try and do what I'm trying to do. Okay. I think that is still a hard thing to say, but I love that. Philippians 4.9, uh, to another church, he says, And the things which you have learned and received and heard about and seen in me, this flawed human being, practice those things. The good things that God is doing in and through my life, do the same thing. Man, I have learned the characteristics of God by seeing it play out in others. I've, learned to, I've seen and learned God's enthusiasm, from Melissa Blackwood and Sean Beveridge. Longevity from Chris and Paula Patuskin. Empathy from Jordan Corbiel and Jasmine Germatakis. Creativity from Andrew Dirksen and Jessica Penner. Responsibility from Eric Beck and Colton Peters. Justice from Candace Fiorentino and Mark Blackwood. Wisdom from Brandon and Robin Lang, Jesse Ambrock, and Serena Prescott. Heart, uh, having a heart for lost and hurting people from Darren and Christine Gardner, Gina Fremont. Boldness from Peter Van Ramsdonk, Seth Contrell, Samara Prescott. Peace from Kevin Penner and Braden Dirksen. Patience from Aaron and Shara Giesbrecht. Reliability from Gary Zydema and Armando Narciso, diligence from Madison McFarlane and Shana Admiral, kindness from Shannon Bremner and Tilo Steinhelber, overcoming spirit from Joanne Delaney and Carrie Sam Kachuk, a love for people from Chelsea Boyd, Jeremy and Jennifer Blackwood, forgiveness from my wife Joy. <laughs> <laughs> Decisiveness. <laughs> Decisiveness from Pastor Mike. And Pastor Monica, I think of this verse when I think of you. Show this verse. Uh, Romans 11.22 says this. Witness the simultaneous balance of the kindness and severity of our God. <laughs> I have watched, okay, I've been a part of this church for 25 years, and I've had the privilege of sitting in on uh, whether it's counseling things or whatever, and I have watched you balance kindness and compassion for someone while also calling out their BS. Like, it's just, that's an amazing thing. So I have learned, and you know what? I could, there, I could, I could keep going. I could keep going. I have learned so much from others. And most of you probably would be like, what are you talking about? When have I, like, what are you, what's, what are you referencing in my life? It's who you are. And it's the reflection I see of Jesus in your life. So thank you for doing that. Uh, man, there's so many people. But 
If you're becoming a disciple, learn from other followers of Christ. And if you are discipling someone else, let them learn from you. Oh, You don't have to even try. Just get them around you, and people will find things in you. If you truly are following Jesus, there is fruit in your life. You might not know what it is, but I guarantee it's there, and other people see it. Let your light shine before men. Let your light shine before men. Don't limit God's impact in the people you have influenced with just because you can't believe in yourself as much as Jesus does. Just get around people. Trust God's doing something through it. Even in your brokenness, his light can shine out and he can make a difference. Okay, I'm going to keep going because these are good things for all of us. Next practice or posture is worship. Okay, now most people think music, and I would say that is probably the most common kind of thing we think of. Uh, I love Sunday morning corporate worship. There's something about being together with you in a room, doing that. But I also love my personal time in my house, or I love going out kind of at dusk and riding my bike around my neighborhood and just like listening to worship music. Oh, so good. But worship is also working hard accurately filling out reports, cooking supper for your kids, doing it for Jesus. Colossians 3.23 says, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. So worship God with how hard you work and the way you treat people. So if you're becoming a disciple, man, absorb some good music that gives glory to God. Let it transform you and look for ways that your every action could be worshiped to God. And if you're discipling someone else, hey, maybe send them some of your favorite songs that you love and be like, this is going to just stir you up. And also point out things in their life. It's like, did you know that the way you talk about your coworkers, that, that's worship. Like, I hear you be intentional with this. Or, like, show them, because we don't always see it in ourselves. The next practice or posture that we can take as disciples and as we help disciple is hospitality. Turn to the person beside you and say, want to come over for supper this week? <laughs> You don't have to, actually, but, <laughs> but you could. But you could. Now, right from the start, the church welcomed people both in gatherings and at, in their homes. And for some, this is very easy. You guys are great at this. Others, that's a challenge. I get it. But the point is, can you put others before yourself and use what God's given you to be a blessing to others? What do, what do I have? Well, you have a home, or you have just your family, and people like being around you, or whatever. Can we be hospitable people and invite people into our worlds and our lives, even if it's messy? Oh, my house, I don't know if I'll have time. I get that. We're like that, too. But you just invite people in. Man, can I just say, the most powerful prayers I've ever prayed with people have been on my own couch. Not in this room. It's been on my couch with people. And I think of... Uh, I think of John and Jasmine. I think of small group time. You know, over the years, you guys come in. Having small group, everybody there, everybody else leaves. You two stick around. My kids go play with your kids so that we can each, like, kind of branch off and have conversations because you guys were going through so much. And we just walked it through with you. And now you guys are so strong. I love it. I'm so encouraged by you guys. And now you're encouraging me in my hard times, too. Thank you. That is discipleship cyclical. It's powerful. There's something powerful in that. So if you're becoming, uh, so if you are becoming a disciple, weasel your way into people's lives. Okay, this is the best thing you can do. Just get into people's lives, because I guarantee the people here they do want to do it. We're just not always good at opening the invitation or, or extending the invitation, but it's there. And I just think of what that did in me, going to Dennis Michelle's every Sunday after church, eating spaghetti and the little, you know, just hanging out. But man, learning like what marriage should look like. Uh, just it, having big conversations that just like challenged me. Oh, I could tell you some of the times he just spiritually kind of smacked me up the side of the head. Not on purpose, out of love, but just like, oh, I needed to hear that. Oh, that was really good. That shaped me. Uh, and if you're discipling someone else, I want to encourage you, initiate, invite people over lunch, bring them into your life. I don't know if Donna and Eric are here, but Donna and Eric are great examples of this. They're just, I'm always amazed. Are you in a room? I need, I want to make it awkward. Where are you? Where? You pointed, whatever. Anyways, wherever they are, they're, they're like, I don't want to put my hand up. But uh, amazing people who are just good at inviting people in. It's so great. All right, next one is prayer. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray continually. Pray for yourself. Pray for others. When someone's name pops into your mind, pray briefly. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Pray for a long time. Pray for little things like lost car keys. Pray for big things like friends with cancer. Pray for forgiveness. Pray for direction. Pray for thankfulness. Pray just because you want to spend time with Jesus. If you are discipling someone else, pray with them. Show them the power of prayer. 
teach them that it's not about what you get. God's not some genie, but he is a God who loves to answer if you ask. Teach them as well that they can pray with power, that they can use words more like thank you than please. Thank you, God, that you want to do this in my life. Instead of please, God, if you have the time, would you? Learning how to pray with power. If you are becoming a disciple, well, you can just do what the actual disciples that follow Jesus said. Teach us to pray. They asked Jesus, teach us to pray. What do we say? How do we do it? What, what, what kind of mindset should we be in? Great way to do it is check out the prayer passport on our City Life app. There's a lot of great resources right there. And you're like, I didn't know that was there. It's, you can find it. Go find it in the more section. Prayer passport. So good. Next practice or posture is silence. Now, we practice this weekly over in Voltage Kids Church where I, I spend a lot of time. And we always, after the message, usually have about a minute of what we call God time. So whatever we've talked about, then it's like, hey, let's be quiet for a minute and just listen to what God might be saying to you. Is this a practice you have in your life? Do you ever just... say nothing and just get quiet and and pay attention? I remember having a conversation with a young adult once who I was like, man, you should do this, like, uh, you know, just Sabbath and, and being quiet. And he was like, I am, he was being very vulnerable. He's like, I'm terrified of being alone with my own thoughts. I remember that's actually the words he used. I was like, wow. But in those moments of vulnerability where we're, we're dealing with the thoughts, we have the good, the bad, the whatever, isn't that an opportunity, an invitation for God to come in and do something in our lives? Silence, solitude is a powerful thing. So if you're becoming a disciple, learn to tune out the noise, be in the moment, because that's often when God shows up. And if you're discipling someone else, encourage them to slow down and make some room for God. Next one is scripture. John 8, 31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, you're truly my disciples. So there's a lot of times Jesus actually, you're like, well, what does a disciple look like? Is it some vague? Jesus is very clear sometimes. Do this, you're a disciple. Do this, you're not a disciple. So he's very clear here. Continue in my word, you're truly a disciple. Man, we can do that. Scripture before phone in the, moment is, uh, uh, in the morning is a great way. It's like I'm starting my day with God. This is something we try and do, even ourselves, family devotions. I do this with my Bible with the guys group that I have where we are just powering through God's word chapter by chapter. We're getting closer. I think we only have seven books of the Bible left to go, some of the minor prophets. Today, I looked it up, 1,199 days straight. We've been doing this since the start of COVID, and we are just in God's word. So if you're becoming a disciple, stick to the script. Rely on a book that, is, that has for thousands of years not failed us and is true. And, one of the, you know, and just we believe that this is the infallible authoritative word of God. Don't pick and choose the parts you like or whatever. Just be, come from a place of like, God, this is your word. And the stuff I don't understand or I'm, I'm wrestling with, out of that, reveal it, God. I'll get in it and you can show me. I don't need to run to YouTube or TikTok to like, what does that mean? It's like, you show me. Like, God can speak to you through his word. And if you're discipling someone else, help them fall in love with God's word and read it with them. All right, and the lack, last practice and posture for today, and there's, there's so many, but these are the ones I kind of just picked. Uh, obedience and self-sacrifice. John 14, 15. Again, Jesus being pretty clear. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You say you love me? Okay, do what I say. John 15, 14. You are my friends if you do what I command. I kind of love it. It's like, you're my friend if. There, there's conditions when it comes to God in these sense. You're my friends when you do what I command. When you're doing that, you're, we're in right relationship. We are in sync. Jesus is Lord, and as, his, as a disciple of him, he has complete say over my life. And he has a lot of commands, and we're actually called to obedience and to put ourselves to the side and choose his way as the best way. Mark 8, 34. If any of you wants to follow me, you will have to give yourself up to God's plan, take up your cross, and do as I do. So it's not easy to follow, follow Jesus. And we've talked about that. We're shifting our perspective on, like, making it easy to follow Jesus. It's not easy to follow Jesus. It's powerful, and in many ways it's simple. Just obey. Oh, okay, well, what does that look like? Well, I'll get into the Word, and I'll find out what His commands are, and then I'll do them. That's obedience. And God asked me right from the start, man, when I was 18, started coming to this church, first thing He asked me to do is a quick side note. You know what it was? Give up WWF wrestling. <laughs> Not going to lie. Not going to lie. It was like the first thing I remember after Monday Night Raw, and I'm walking home from my buddy's house, and God's like, I want you to stop watching it. Like, I just felt that impression. It was like, 
no, that's my life. And he's like, yeah, that's the point. It's like an idol in your life, man. Like, let it go. And I learned, and I, you know, I saw now, bigger picture, as you start to just like trust God and self-sacrifice, you see the way he reveals things in us and brings out uh, better things. So just, just trust him. Obey and self-sacrifice. So if you're becoming a disciple, die to yourself, listen for the promptings, and then respond with, yes, Lord. And if you're discipling someone else, you can do things like this. Ask them questions. Hey, is there anything you feel like God is asking of you right now? That's a good question. That will make them stop and think. And it, you can then navigate them through that. But if they don't think of those, they might, or, or you know what, uh, lots of times, and I knew, I've known this, there's times I'm like, I hope somebody asks me. I don't know how to say that I'm struggling right now or that this is going on. But if someone genuinely asked me, oh man, boom, I would just lay it out. I would just share. So if we're the people who do that, hey, like how are you doing right now? But also like, do you feel like there's something God's asking of you right now? Yes, I feel like he wants me to stop watching wrestling. Okay, man, like, well, then how about uh, every Monday night you come over to my place and said, we'll read the Bible or we'll hang out so you're not tempted. Okay, sure, that works. Hey, we can do this together. We can do this together. So with all that said, I hope those are some helpful tools as you become discipled by Jesus and all does also disciple others towards Jesus. And I really believe one of the best tools we can use, uh, you can put up the picture, we've been showing this the last couple weeks, the journey. Okay, so we've, we've put this together, this you can go to cty.lc slash journey. Uh, and it's got 12 different things you can go through with people. Uh, you can find it on the app under the next steps section. We really are going to keep talking about this because there's value in this. And we, we knew that sometimes you're like, okay, I want to do something, but I don't know what to do. So I believe this is really going to help make it easier for you. But don't just go and read it by yourself that you're missing the point, okay? If you're like, I'm at a place where I need to learn, I'm new to this, then you ask somebody, maybe after church today, would you go through this with me? I'm pretty sure they'll say yes. Or maybe you have been a Christian for a long time and we go through seasons where it's like we're being intentional and then all of a sudden it's like, man, I haven't like talked with someone about Jesus in a while. You know, I just set up uh, for myself another, t I'm, I'm gonna get together with someone we're gonna start doing this because you also, one of the benefits by the way is when you sit down as a, as a mature believer, I'll use that term, and you have conversations with people who are just learning, man, it stirs the fire in you all over again. When you start explaining it or going through it, and again, you don't have to be some theologian. You can use these tools, and it's like, here's a question, here's a verse, let's talk about it. And it's going to reinforce things in you, but you, you have something that you need to give to others. God wants to work through you to disciple others, just like someone, I guarantee, did, did for you. So, can we stand up? Jesus gave us a great commission to make disciples, to, form, to be formed in the practices and postures, and to help others be formed in the practices and postures that he taught us. And he sends us on a journey. And the world is watching. And I believe the world is hungry. They don't know what they need. But if we would be brave enough to not just wait for the people to be in here, but like to have the opportunities. Man, the coworker who's just like, oh man, like, yeah, stuff at home's pretty tough right now, whatever. And you're like, hey, like, do you want to talk through this? Like, I think this would actually be really helpful to you. Or can I share a verse with you? Or I think you're going to be surprised because the world is watching for the evidence of Jesus. And how does he really change lives? Like, really? There's people saying like, okay, if Jesus is real, where's the proof? And the proof is in your life. And the proof is in sharing that. 1 Timothy 4.15, cultivate all these practices, okay? Paul, again, talking to Timothy, someone he discipled. Cultivate these practices, live by them so that all will see, okay? So that all will see how you are advancing and growing. So do this, but then as you do it, it's going to shine that light to others. It's going to show the work of Jesus as we continue on the journey with Jesus. You are part of something bigger than yourself, we need to be, we need to get out of our comfort zones and say, man, I'm grateful for what I've learned. I've got more to learn and I need to help other people. Even if they're only, even if I'm only a few steps along, that's a few steps I can help someone else with. We want to be a church full of disciples, paying it forward. And that's what we want to be. And so I want to pray. And I, and I wonder, you know, if, if you're here today, if you are a disciple of Jesus, I hope this just inspires you to just keep going in your own growth, but more, do, do not just be a vessel filled up with your own, like let it pour out into others. God wants to do something through you. But it's got to start today by 
coming into relationship with Jesus. So can we just close our eyes? And I want to extend the invitation because the most important thing you can do is say yes to Jesus. You can't go on the journey until you start the journey. And it starts by handing life over to Jesus, not just inviting him into a little pocket of your world, but to literally say, Jesus, I can't do this on my own. I'm handing it to you. So I want to, if you want to pray that prayer with us, because we, we do this together, uh, I want to invite you to just repeat after me and just say, Jesus, thank you for the life you created, the door you opened. I want to step through. Thank you for the price you paid on the cross and that you came back to life to give me new life. I want to follow you. My hope is in you. Make me a disciple and then work through me so I can bring that same life change to other people in my world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good. We hope today's message encouraged you. If you want to take your next step in saying yes to Jesus, you can always contact us at cty.lc slash next step or fill out the next step section on the City Life app. It's an honor to play a small part in what God is doing in your life. We look forward to connecting with you soon.